بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ویلکم آئی ایم فخر زمان ان ٹوڈیز لیکچر وی ول ڈسکس یونٹ نمبر سیون کمیونیکیشن اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی کورس کوڈ ایٹ تھاؤزینڈ فور ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ففٹین ان دس یونٹ وی ول ڈسکس ٹیکنیکل writing to describe technology in workplace computer hardware and software technologies and effective communication workplace safety and ergonomics first of all i am going to talk about technical communication in technical communication we will discuss writing to instruct dear students do you always read the instructions before tackling a task do you find most instructions to be confusing incomplete or tedious instead of reading the instructions many people use a trial and error approach in trying to program a DVD player, use jumper cables to start a car or complete some other task. They may glance through the instructions looking for information that can help them complete the task quickly. As a result, they may complete steps in the wrong order or skip some steps entirely. Only after other approaches fail will they resort to reading the instructions instructions tell readers how to do something manuals are sets of instructions combined with explanation descriptions definitions and other related information both instructions and manuals should provide all of the guidance readers need to carry out tasks the writer challenge is to create instructions and manuals that are so organized that people can find in instructions they want quickly and understand them easily now moving to the parts of effective instructions instructions should be clear well organized and uh, uh, geared to the intended receivers they must include the information that receivers need not too much and uh, not too little instructions should use words that receivers understand in addition instruction should look inviting to read effective instructions include a clear and specific title introduction and needed items an uh, introduction and list of any needed tools equipment and materials numbered steps and a conclusion so first we should talk about clear and specific title the title for a set of instructions should name the topic it may also imply what the reader will do with the topic the title should be specific enough for readers to know what it does and does not cover the next is introduction and needed items readers need a brief orientation two or three sentences 
before they begin following a set of instructions. Writers tend to skimp on introductions um, because they want to get started writing the steps of the instructions. However, readers need to know when and why they should follow instructions. The introduction should explain what the instructions should accomplish. If that is not obvious, it should state who should follow the instructions and uh, perhaps when and uh, why to follow them. For example, suppose instructions tell how to order replacement parts. The introduction should explain who is responsible for ordering the parts and when the parts should be ordered. Dear students, list any needed items such as tools, equipment, and materials so readers can get them before beginning the steps. Include any of the sections that are needed, uh, special skills or knowledge required, time frame, cautions, and definitions. In special skills or knowledge required, if you expect readers to have special skills or knowledge, point that out. Time frame. Tell readers how long the entire task or individual steps should take if that information would be helpful to them. Cautions. Warm readers about possible injury or other hazards. Definitions. Define any terms that might not be familiar or readers uh, such as initialize and airway. The next is uh, numbered steps. To begin think uh, carefully about what your intended readers need to know in order to accomplish the task. What do they already know about the procedure? Have they completed similar tasks? How is this task different? Your goal in writing steps is to provide everything readers need with the out or arming them with the details or unneeded information. One way to streamline your instructions is to avoid including obvious steps such as seat yourself in front of the computer. Next is conclusion. In the last section of your instructions describe the expected results. The conclusion will help readers determine whether they have successfully completed the uh, procedure. If your instructions are lengthy, you might summarize the major steps. You might tell readers where to find more help if they need it. The conclusion may simply be a sentence or two that uh, follows the steps and has no separate heading of its own. Dear students, now moving to the next topic in technical communication, writing guidelines. Writing specific detailed instructions and descriptions is called technical writing. The guidelines apply to all types of technical writing. Be specific and uh, precise, avoid uh, general terms. Use language the readers will understand. When choosing what terms to use, consider your audience. Uh, general readers might not understand the term radiotherapy. However, if you were writing for medical personnel, the term would be appropriate. Dear students, 
the next topic is writing steps. The uh, guidelines will help you write clear, easy to follow steps for instructions uh, of number each step and start it with a verb. The verb should name an action the reader will complete. Put the steps in a sequential order, the order in which they should be. Describe each step separately so readers will not overlook at step. Indent any explanations under the appropriate step. Don't number explanations because the reader may think they are steps. You may also put the explanations in italics and enclose them in parentheses. Don't confuse explanations with warnings. Explanations are comments that help the reader understand the steps. Warnings are cautions that alert the reader to possible dangers or serious problems. If a step should be carried out only under certain conditions, describe the conditions first. If you don't immediately alert readers to a special condition, they might complete the step before they realize it should be done only at certain times. If you have many steps or several procedures, group them under subheadings. Use single spacing 1 or 1 1.15 for the information within a step leave a blank line 10 or uh, 12 pts between steps include diagrams or other graphics uh, whenever they will clarify the instructions create a clear inviting format by using numbers letters in indentation bold and a large amount of white space white space is a blank area that does not contain text or images make each step stand out highlight warnings so readers don't overlook them uh, for example you might print a warning in a different color in a box or in a large font place the warning in a position where the reader will see the warning in time to avoid the danger or problem to which the warning relates parts of effective manuals effective manuals ke parts hain wo kuch yun hain a clear and specific title a detailed table of contents an introduction logical divisions of material clear and complete steps in correct order figures and illustrations as needed glossary of terms if needed an appendix for supplementary material and an index dear students the next topic in technical communication is writing to describe a description is a verbal and a visual picture of something. You might be asked to write a description of an object or a mechanism, usually as part of a report or a manual. An object is something in animate that uh, is natural or uh, synthetic 
and can be seen or touched such as an apple, a coffee cup or a pencil. A mechanism is a type of object that consists of parts working together to perform one or more tasks. A mechanism can be as simple as a pencil, sharpeners or as complex as a computer. You might also be asked to write a process description. A process is a series of events that take place over time and results in a change or a product. Now we are talking about object descriptions. A description can range from an informal one paragraph explanation to a formal report. Consider the needs and backgrounds of your readers as you plan a description. Consider what your readers already know about the object or process. Determine how they will use the description. For example, will they use it to assemble a car seat or to evaluate its safety? These questions will help you determine how much detail is needed and the terms you need to define. If we talk about parts of an object description, we will see that we have the title, introduction and overview, part by part description, body and Conclusion. ये हमें मिलेगा. Parts of an object description में. So first we should talk about title and uh, introduction. Like instructions, descriptions should begin with a clear, specific title. An informative title tells what the description covers. In the uh, introduction begin with the definition and the purpose of the object to orient readers for example you may describe what the object looks like give a general idea of how it works and list its principal parts don't state the obvious such as telling readers that a copier makes copies include a labeled illustration in the introduction or in the part by part description the next is part by part description in the body describe each part of the objective separately explain each parts appearance and function described any supports uh, parts of parts as necessary list the parts in a logical sequence for example you might start with the most important or most obvious part you might begin at the top and the process to the bottom you might begin with the main parts and move to the peripheral parts you might move from the outside to the inside Label the box on one large illustration or include uh, an illustration of each part. You might include a, a cut away or a cross sectional diagram of internal parts. For a mechanism, you might describe how it looks when it is not functioning, what each uh, part looks like and uh, how the parts work together and uh, or how the parts fit together and the last one is conclusion longer object descriptions required a brief conclusion to summarize what the main parts are and how they work together the conclusion of a mechanism description might describe one operating cycle the conclusion of a short description may be a brief paragraph without a 
separate heading. Next is writing object descriptions. When writing an object description, use specific precise language. Use words that readers will understand and be object in your writing style. Describe the object or part by its shape, dimensions, size, color, position and uh, or material. To describe an object shape, you might use words such as uh, L-shaped, tree-like or uh, concave. In uh, describing its size, you might include the height, uh, depth, area and weight. More accurately, your readers might use the data to determine whether certain parts will fit together. Compare the unfamiliar to the familiar. For example, you might compare the compound eye of an insect to the mirror of a telescope. Both objects have many facets. Edit the description to be sure it is clear, complete, correct, concise, and courteous. Next is process descriptions. A process description explains how something works. It does not explain how to perform a pro uh, process that is the function of instructions. For example, it might describe a department or business process such as requesting copies or explaining how a reporting process works. The, the description uh, might be a separate document or part of a larger document such as a repair manual or a sales uh, brochure. Often a writer prepares a process description and then a set of instructions for the same process. For example, the writer might explain how blood test orders are processed and then how to order blood tests. Parts of a process description title, introduction and overview, part by part, description, body and conclusion. Moving to the next topic, writing process description. The first step in writing a process description is determining your reader's needs and levels of experience and knowledge. You must also find out how your description will be used so you know what details to include and how to present them. When writing process descriptions use specific precise language, choose words that readers will understand, be objective and factual in your writing style. Describe the process completely from beginning to end. Include enough details for your readers to get a complete picture. Compare the unfamiliar to the familiar. For example, you might compare the process of converting sunlight into electricity with a solar panel to a green plant converting sunlight into energy through photosynthesis. Added the uh, description to be sure it is clear, complete, correct, concise, and courteous. If possible, have a co-worker read the description and provide feedback. Proofread carefully and correct all errors. Dear students, moving to the next topic in uh, technology in workplace technology at workplace technology is the application of scientific knowledge to 
practical tasks. The word technology also refers to tools, machines and other inventions that make work faster, easier or safer. Technology saves time and efforts. For example, a dishwashing machine makes cleaning dirty dishes easy. Or using a, a water makes building a set of kitchen cabinets faster. For employers, technology can save money and improve the quality of products. It uh, allows people to accomplish more work in less time. Being able to use technology in your work and to learn and adapt to new technologies are useful skills. Next is computer hardware and software. A computer is a machine that processes data according to a set of instructions in order to perform tasks. Computers range in size from supercomputers which may take up several rooms to computers that fit in the palm of your hand. A personal computer PC is a small relatively inexpensive computer designed for an individual user. Personal computers are also called microcomputer. PCs may be linked together to form networks. A network is a group of devices such as computers and printers connected in order to share data and our tasks. The physical parts of a computer and related devices are called hardware. The part of a computer that does uh, the actual computing is the microprocessor. A microprocessor is a silicon chip the size of a fingernail. Microprocessor provide the computing power for many products that people use every day. Cell phones, music players, microwave ovens, TVs, and car use microprocessors. A typical computer workstation consists of a computer, monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and desk and chair. A workstation also may include a printer, scanner, or fax machine. Often, and though the, that equipment is placed in a central location for use by a group of workers, the computer usually is uh, connected to, to other computers in a network. The network allows users to communicate and share resources such as printers and data. And uh, Dear students, now we are talking about desktop computers. A desktop computer is a personal computer that fits on a desk but is too large to carry easily from place to place. It is designed for use in an office or at home. On a desktop computer, you can accomplish many different kinds of tasks. You can send and receive email and instant messages. You can also access networks and the internet. Laptop computers. A laptop computer is a portable personal computer. Small enough as the name laptop implies. To sit on your lap, laptops typically uh, wait from two to seven pounds and also are known as notebooks. They have the same uses as a desktop computer. Laptops can be plugged into any standard electrical outlet. They can also run on batteries that are recharged by simply plugging in the computer. A laptop can have all the features of a full-sized computer. 
including CD and DVD and drives and uh, email and internet access. The next is tablet computers. A tablet computer is a portable personal computer that allows user to enter text by keying a handwriting. Depending on the model, you use your finger or a special digital pen to handwrite text. You also use your finger or a digital pen in place of a mouse to navigate the screen select items and give commands otherwise tablets offer the same features as other personal computers a tablet is smaller and lighter than a laptop about the size of a legal pad and uh, roughly an inch or two thick the screen rotates and folds down over the keyboard or detached from it. The next is handheld computers. A handheld computer also called a palm top is a personal computer that weighs a pound or less and fits in the palm of your hand. The most common type of handheld is the personal digital assistant or PDA which serves as a personal organizer. PDAs and other handhelds may be loaded with software for various uses. PDAs generally includes a date book, an address book, a task list, a memo, pad, email and a calculator. As on a tablet you use a digital pen or your finger to navigate or make selections and you can handwrite data. The next topic in technology in workplace is computer software. A computer processes data according to a set of instructions to perform a specific task. Without instructions, a computer cannot do anything. It gets some of the instructions from you through the keyboard and mouse, but it gets most of them from software. Computer software, also called programs, consist uh, of step-by-step uh, -step written instructions Programs are written in special language a computer can understand. Software can grouped into three types. The first is operating system software, second application software, and third utility software. So first we should talk about operating system software. The operating system is software that performs the computer's most basic operations. For example, it handles the transfer of data and files. It controls equipment such as the keyboard, monitor, and printer. It also manages and allows you to use all the other software on the computer. The second is application software. Application software is used to perform work tasks. For example, word processing software is used to create letters, reports, and other documents. The third is utility software. Utility software is used to manage and secure data on a computer. For example, virus protection software, which is used to uh, block, detect, and remove viruses, is a popular utility program. Backup software can be used to make a copy of the data on a computer hard drive. 
the next topic is file storage and management when you save computer files you generally save them on an internal hard drive on your computer uh, besides saving your files there you need to back them up to back up files means to make a copy of them on a secondary storage disk or device backing up files provides you with a copy of the file that you can use if the file stored on the hard drive is uh, destroyed or deleted the parts of file storage and management is storage options computer disks digital video disks flash memory file compression and file management the next topic in technology in workplace is peripherals peripherals are devices that work with your computer to help you accomplish tasks printers scanners and fax machines are common computer peripherals aziz talba talbat ab hum badhte hain next topic ki janib jo ki technology in workplace mein hai technologies and effective communication technology allows people to be connected to others around the world a popular technology that makes the possible is wi-fi so first we should talk about the internet the internet is a vast network that connects millions of computers worldwide computers on the internet communicate in different ways on the world wide web which is one part of the internet computers use hypertext transfer protocol when you access a website you are accessing a set of related web pages stored on a server or a host computer web pages are documents written in a computer language called hypertext markup language html next is cell phones a cell phone is a portable wireless telephone which uh, changes antenna connections during travel from one radio reception cell to another cell phones are popular way to communicate for business and personal use a cell phone is basically a two way radio the name cell phone comes from the division of a service area into cells each cell has its own tower or antenna and radio equipment next is smartphones a smartphone adds the features of a handheld computer to a cell phone smartphones are more expensive than other cell phones they are popular with business users however and uh, their sales are growing smartphones include features such as address book calendar and tasks list handwriting recognition high speed data transfer a keyboard gps device software such as word processing and spreadsheet programs voice record feature and synchronize feature the next is pagers a pager is a handheld device that allows receivers that they have a message pagers are small suitable for uh, swiping in a pocket and uh, clipping on a belt or strewing in a purse pages are useful for people who are away from their office but who might need to be contacted 
next is voice mail voice mail is a computerized system that answers telephone calls it allows a caller to leave a recorded message if the receiver is not available when the call comes in many organizations provide voicemail for their employees it is also a common cell phone feature next is voip instead of a conventional telephone system your company may use internet telephony or voip voice or internet protocol with this digital phone service calls go through a high-speed internet connection rather than a conventional phone line for dear students we have other technologies uh, uh, conference technologies training technologies uh, digital cameras global positioning systems and document transmittal the next topic is workplace safety and economics workplace safety is a major concern for both employers and employees many accidents and injuries happen in the workplace knowing how to handle accidents and how to prevent them are both important there are three uh, types in workplace safety and economics cause of injuries in offices uh, attitudes that affect safety and emergency plans ergonomics is the study of the relationship between people and the working environment the aim of ergonomics is to make it easier and safer for people to use tools and other objects lifting a patient the correct way and choosing a lightweight tool that fits your hand are example of applying ergonomics applying ergonomic guidelines when performing a task can reduce the chance of certain illnesses or injuries first is repetitive stress injuries and second is vision problems first we should talk about repetitive stress injuries King on a computer can cause repetitive stress injuries which are also called repetitive strain injuries these terms refer to a group of conditions caused by placing too much stress on a joint repetitive steps injury happens when the same action is performed repeatedly second is vision problems computer users also may experience eye strain and related vision problems sometimes called computer vision syndrome cvs some symptoms of uh, cvs are given in the list which uh, we are mentioning difficulty shifting focus from the computer screen to more distant objects pain discomfort of deep in the eye area blurred vision dry irritated or burning eyes sensitivity to light headache and muscle pull spams the next topic in technology in workplace is ergonomics and the computer work station to work safely and comfortably at a desktop computer arrange your work area properly do warm-up exercises and use the proper key building uh, position take frequent breaks to rest your body the types of ergonomics and the computer workstation are arrange the work area do warm-up 
exercises check your king position take frequent break avoid vision problems other computers and economic equipment first we should talk about I mean the work area position the uh, keyboard at elbow height directly in front of your chair the front edge of the keyboard should be even with the edge of the desk place your mouse on the same level as the keyboard as close to your body as possible if you are keying from a document or book place it near the monitor in the uh, position where you can read uh, and uh, switch your gaze from the uh, monitor to the printer page easily second one is do warm-up exercises there are five to six um, exercises first open your hands with the fingers wide and muscles tense close your fingers into a tight fist with thumb on top relax your fingers as you strengthen them repeat 10 times second clench your fingers briefly and then extend them relaxing the muscles repeat several times third place the fingers and thumb of one hand between two fingers of uh, the other and spread the fingers as much as possible repeat for all fingers of both hands fourth interlace are uh, the fingers of both hands together writing your hands rubbing the heel of the palms vigorously fifth spread the fingers of both hands as much as possible hold the position for a moment or two and then relax uh, the fingers and lightly fold them into the palm of the hand repeat slowly several times and six rub your palms with your thumbs then rub your fingers the back of the hands and your wrist vigorously next is check your king position keep your feet flat on the floor if uh, you connect reach the floor adjust your chair or use a footrest if a proper footrest is not available use a box a telephone box a backpack or another suitable object next is take frequent break if you work on a computer for extended periods take frequent breaks and next avoid vision problems arranging your workstation properly can help to prevent and easy vision problems other computers applying ergonomics to the use of laptop computers can be challenging the laptop's keyboard is not uh, detachable and uh, is uh, very close to the monitor the last one is ergonomic equipment parallel wrist rests placed in front of the keyboard and mouse are a good investment if used properly you should not rest your wrist on a wrist rest while keying or using the mouse dear students thank you very much in today's lecture we talked about communication and technology unit number seven course code 8415 thanks for all of you now we will meet in next lectures till then allah hafiz